So today we're switching up the cookbook. We're switching up the chef to the bookshelf. Let's go. All right, what's it gonna be? How about this cookbook right here? Marco Pierre White's White Heat. Yeah, come here, come here, come here, come here. What the f is this shit? You know, you never wanna get in the chef's way in their kitchen. You don't wanna overcook something, burn something, lip off to them. You just don't wanna cross them, right? Like say you're in Gordon Ramsay's kitchen and you do something he doesn't like, well, he's gonna let you know, he's gonna cuss you out, he's gonna call you names, he's gonna toss something at you. There's Gordon Ramsay there, a younger Gordon Ramsay, and there he is being trained by Marco Pierre White. He worked under him for like two years. Marco was his mentor, and so the story goes, he's the only one to successfully make Gordon Ramsay cry. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. That's terrifying. So this guy was considered like a rock star in the kitchen. He made being a chef cool. And this cookbook is considered like, um, I don't know, it's like revolutionary for a lot of the, the chefs that came after him. Cause it depicts like, I don't know, the grittier side of cooking. There's these black and white photos kind of giving you a glimpse of what it would be like to be in his kitchen. Spoiler alert, I wouldn't last one second. And a kitchen of this caliber would have three Michelin stars. And he was the youngest chef to ever get that many. Yeah, I mean, and look at this guy, he's a rock star. He's got his long hair, he smokes with the ladies. Also, he's posing with the shark here. I don't know. Just don't screw anything up, or you're gonna be shunned to the corner. Don't piss him off. You get your act together, boys, for f sake. Come on, you, get out the f way. Anywho, I was leafing through all these intricate looking recipes here, and I stopped dead in my tracks when I spotted this one right here. A scallop of salmon with basil. There's simplicity in cooking a piece of fish well, in making a simple sauce with a light touch. And I'm always looking for like new ways to cook salmon, so uh, I don't know. I gotta try this. I must try it. Let's get to work. Okay, so we're gonna start off with making my own fish stock because this is a fine dining recipe and uh, cameras are rolling. You gotta make your own fish stock. If I wasn't filming right now, 100% no, I wouldn't be doing this. But there's that small chance that Marco's watching and I don't want to be caught with pre-made fish stock, not on this show. What am I doing? So this is fennel. One piece of bulb fennel, finely sliced. Snip off that part there. Split it in half and then I remove the core. Something like that. So the white of one leek, but this is looking pretty gnarly, so I have a backup leek. And then sliced. Wash it. Dutch oven. Toss in a quarter cup of butter. One tablespoon, two tablespoon, three tablespoon, four. With the one piece bulb of fennel finely sliced, half a cup of finely sliced onion, and the white of a leek. So I'm gonna get these vegetables over to a sweat. Softened but not browned. And let's get serious. Let's get very serious. These are uh, the heads and body parts of <laughs> the carcasses of two red snappers. Uh, Marco, I didn't do it. I hope everyone is okay. We all do. I went on a bit of an adventure to find fish trimmings uh, today slash yesterday. Uh, you kind of have to plan it in advance. You have to reach out to like the fishmonger and say, hey, put some aside for me. Okay, now the reason I'm going with the red snapper trimmings today rather than another fish is because it's the only thing I could find bes besides salmon. Uh, and I know I'm cooking with salmon, but for the fish stock, Marco is suggesting turbot, which is a f white fish you're gonna find over in England where he's making his stock. And this is the closest thing I could find today is the red snapper. It's a white fish, it's a white fish, and this is two pounds worth. And there shouldn't be any gills in there, which there is totally not. If you know a fishmonger, call them a couple days before, before they use their bones for their own stock. But you know, the last time I was working with fish heads and all the bones, uh, I was a bit of a wimp. You have to take them out or this is gonna ah! come a long way. Cooking the fish trimmings with the vegetables. After a minute, I'm gonna add in around four tablespoons of a white wine. Let's just say that was around a quarter cup worth. 
maybe half a cup worth. I'm gonna reduce that by half and then some since I used a little more. So after that's reduced and go six cups of cold water. Then I'm gonna bring that back up to a boil, simmer. And then I gotta go searching for impurities. If there's any in there that you can find, skim them. Three lemon slices, three sprigs of parsley. I only need a sprig of cilantro, sprig of tarragon. Six white peppercorns, that's seven. Seven white peppercorns. How about a star anise? Wish upon a star anise. Now that the fish eyeball is officially exploded, believe it or not, all I gotta do is simmer this for 20 minutes. That's it. Bowl me and a strainer, like a fine one and just a sieve. Yeah, okay, yeah, great service. First, strain it through the sieve. The smells are intoxicating and right in my face. Pass it through the very fine strainer. This is a uh, chinoise, I believe it's what it's called. There's no mention of salting this thing, so uh, you know what, I'll just season the, the dish. I won't worry about, you know. Fishy. So this should be around six cups of fish stock. Uh, I don't need that much for this recipe. Far less, but I figure, you know, use what you need, pack up the rest, throw it in the freezer, and then you got fish stock for whenever. I'm gonna put this off to the side, let it cool, and I'm gonna go on to bigger and greater things. We are gonna move on to the basil cream sauce. As he says, it is a simple sauce with a light touch. Two shallots, finely chopped. 15 small basil leaves or equal to that with ginormous ones and small ones. So I need to cut these into thin julienne strips. What I'm gonna do is the classic chiffonade. So roll it all up like a stogie. You gotta keep in mind that when you initiate the thinly slicing of the basil, it's gonna oxidize pretty damn fast. It's gonna start turning a bit of a darker, ugly green. So um, that's what he says to do. So you just gotta... That's what he says to do, so you just gotta do it. Lovely. Two tablespoons of butter. Moderate heat, which was medium. In goes the shallot. Okay, so we gotta get those softened. Sweat them out. When they're translucent like that, add in the basil. We hope everyone's okay, right? Keep it stirring and keep on hoping. That's right outside my building. Oh, off they go. This is a dry white vermouth right here. It was specifically mentioned in the recipe, so I figure you gotta get it or you're gonna get in trouble. So it is called Noily Pratt. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. It says it's from France, although it does sound like some sort of British curse word, like Marco Pierre White would be calling Gordon Ramsay or something. You know, Noily Pratt. You Noily Pratt. Something like that. Three tablespoons of the dry white vermouth. Three tablespoons of the Noily Pratt. How many was that? Noily Pratt. We got to deglaze. Noily Pratt. Noily Pratt. Reduce until the liquid is almost gone. Bring over the fish stock. All I need of this fish stock is half a cup worth. That's it. I know, there's a lot of hoopla for nothing, right? Boiling that fish stock down, reducing by half. So with four tablespoons of heavy cream, add the cream in. Stir that in, I'm gonna bring it up to almost a boil, but not totally. And then next up I have around a tablespoon of butter and I have to add in a little at a time. And he says to incorporate them by making waves in the sauce. I have a pinch of salt there. And pepper, not the black pepper, okay. Pinch of white pepper and a few drops of lemon juice. Just a few drops. Does that lid fit? 
does. I am gonna need that burner for the salmon. I'm just gonna turn it off. It'll keep warm. It will keep warm. It's salmon time. For all the people that are about to type, where's that salmon from? Did you get farmed? Did you get wild? East coast, west coast? Every time I make a video with salmon, there's always some sort of a smart aleck comment that I'm trying to avoid today with this nice looking cut of fish. Paid a pretty penny for it. Look at the vibrant color to it. You know it was fresh. It was wild. It was beautiful. It looks great. It's gonna taste great. Let's get to work. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna cut the salmon here because I wanted to match that cookbook photo as closely as I can and we're making like a Michelin star meal. This is I need an eight ouncer. Perfect. There's no mention in the cookbook if I should be removing the skin or not. Typically I would leave it on because I like it, but uh, I'm looking at the photo, the skin's removed, so let's do so. I know that you get the towel here and you hold the skin down and then you try to get the knife as close to the skin as possible. It wasn't perfect, but it is a personal best. So I'm gonna season and a little white pepper. Salt and pepper just kind of worked its way into the meat there. And now I'm just gonna gently pat dry. So there's a little bit of a tear on the very top of that meat. I believe it was there from the get go. What I gotta do here first is make sure doubly that this fish is completely dry. What we're doing is a thing called a dry fry. Uh, sounds pretty self-explanatory. So on a very high heat on my nonstick pan, one and a half minutes per side. That's it. It's gonna completely revolutionize the way I make dinner if this is only gonna take three minutes. We shall see. That's it. Flipper. I think my fish is kind of thick and you can see that it's kind of raw on the outside there. So I'm just gonna do an extra 15 seconds per side. Like a hoot of white pepper on top and just a few drops of lemon juice. Place the fish on the plate. Serve the sauce all around the fish. Quick wipe through just to make sure that it's presentable for your customers. That's gonna be me today. Order up. Whoa, okay, okay. That's interesting. That's a 10 out of 10. Take a bite. It's gone. It melts in your mouth. I rarely eat it this rare. <laughs> That's a time saver. It's a game changer. This is a great way to cook salmon if you like it cooked specific way, which I don't always, like when I'm cooking myself, I don't always, but that was phenomenal. Dry fried to perfect. Basil cream sauce, also fantastic. Just thinking, you know, you could dry fry the salmon, <laughs> dry fry, my new favorite word, with dill, capers, lemon. That's my ideal way of eating salmon. And I think that would be a knockout. Something to think about, something for next time. So well, that was a solid experiment. Always interesting to learn new ways to cook food that you love. Easy to do, and yeah, you, maybe it's a bit impractical to make your own fish stock. If you don't want to, if you don't have the time, if you don't have the red snapper heads, but uh, it's, it's like half an hour, done. And uh, yeah, this whole day was fairly easy in the kitchen for a beautiful dish and simplicity at its finest. Marco Pure White. 
Whoops. That's gonna wrap things up over here. This was Jamie and Marco. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Yeah, come here, come here, come here, come here. What the f is this sh While I stand here with this beautiful fish in front of me, I'm thinking of the last time that I cooked salmon to the world. It was this recipe that I was crafting last year. I spent the better half of last year working on this recipe. Every week I would make salmon and I was like tweaking things with this thing and I had it just right and I was excited because I never share my own recipes to everyone. I'm always just cooking other people's. So I made this short little video and I baked the salmon in the oven and I took it out, started eating it and I realized it was tad, <laughs> tad overcooked. It's a bit dry, but I didn't think much of it because this is the recipe that I've been using and perfecting and I thought everything was cool. I was just like, okay, maybe it's just something in my head. When I was editing the video, I realized that the oven temperature was set to 425 or 450 or something like that Fahrenheit. I'm gonna bake this 450 degree F. I'm gonna bake this 350 degrees F. Now that oven temp would be 100 degrees hotter than how I usually cook the fish but I had already filmed the video and I was looking at it, I was like, okay, maybe no one's gonna notice. You know, it's just a short little video, I'll release it and there you go. Well, it turns out like a millions, millions of people watched it. Everyone could tell. And my beautiful recipe that I had been crafting for so long, it was burnt. I got all these comments from all these people in the world, you know, what have you done to this poor fish? 